Hello there, my name is Kuma, and today we are taking a close look at Tiana. Not sure if it's really me standing before you? Here's a hint. The Gemini doesn't talk. Intel is half the battle. Hostile in my sights! Call for me! Tiana is the operator from the second Rainbow Six collab that caught my attention the most. She is a 5-star dog keeper with a unique kit. Usually, dog keepers want to play defensive roles as damage sponges with extra HP and damage reduction who don't mind being killed a few times. Or when they play offensive roles, you can let them do whatever damage they want with no concerns for their HP, because their substitute will function as a safety net, giving them a chance to come back later. Just in case you don't know, dog keepers have a trait that doesn't allow them to die the first time they are killed. They will instead change into a substitute that has zero block and extra perks given by the operator's talent. They all vanish after 20 seconds, bringing the operator back to life. And that is repeatable. As long as the substitute survives for 20 seconds, the operator will continue to revive. For the most part, Yana would seem to function as a normal dog keeper. She has the same trait as the others, she has a talent linked to her substitute, and she can't die unless her clone is killed. But unlike any other in the class, Yana doesn't do anything in her original form. She can't even attack. She plays instead as the clone as we know it. This was translated amazingly from Rainbow Six, where Yana can first send a clone for scouting and then catch the opponents by surprise. In Ark Knights, that means we have a doll keeper who works in the opposite way as all the others. The clone is the main body we can deploy on the map, and the real Yana comes out when she wants to act. This creates a weird dynamic, where she doesn't have the safety net of the substitute when she's attacking, because to do anything, she has to be in her vulnerable state. Oh, hello there, my dear customer! You are correct! That means Yana can't really perform the defensive tasks you would normally give to doll keepers. She can still take some hits here and there, she isn't the most frail operator, her HP and defense are serviceable, but she can't sit there and take a bunch of fireballs or elemental arrows or faust, nor anything like that. She will simply die. In a way, Yana as a doll keeper works as an exaggerated form of Kazemaru, because Kazemaru also has some problems with surviving hits. But at the very least, she still has 2 HP bars, something Yana does not have. But that's still not a problem, right? It's not like all the operators in the game are dog keepers and have infinite lives. So let's leave that preconception and those expectations behind and think about Yana as she is. In her talent, Yana deploys a hologram copy of herself that can't attack. But there is a cool part. When her hologram gets attacked, it inflicts 30% fragile on the enemy who attacked it for 10 seconds. Yana also comes out to use her skills and deal damage when the talent triggers. And her first skill is really what made me like this character. Yana works basically as a reusable deployable mine. This is a fake power strike that deals 400% of Yana's attack as physical damage in a splash area around the target who attacked the hologram. And that is a big modifier. It translates with no extra buffs into a 4400 hit of physical damage when accounting for her fragile as well, because in this skill the fragile will always proc. As we know, the buffs and side effects always happen before the damage. But this skill won't really do much on its own, because of the dog keeper mechanics. She can only activate this skill when changing into her substitute, because this is a passive. She can't activate it on her own, which means she has to wait 20 seconds to be able to activate it again. And as much as I love power strikes, even the fake ones like Yana's here, this is a long skill cycle to wait for a power strike. This makes it difficult for Yana to deal with enemy waves that would otherwise be a breeze for operators with splash damage and a 400% modifier like she does. What you should actually consider is the fragile effect. And that is where you will find Yana's value. If you deploy Yana in the middle of an elite lane, she will debuff enemies with a 50% uptime. Of course, there is the downside of being a single target debuff, and that will only work against enemies who can hit Yana. 
but that's still there to be used one way or another. Against single target melee bosses, Yana is untouchable because of the zero block after getting hit. And with a little bit of clever maneuvering, you could have the same half cycle fragile uptime against the boss, making it a breeze to kill them. You need to think of Yana with her S1 as a support if you want to play her best. She will still be able to kill trash mobs no problem if you want her to do anything as the main character. Just don't expect the defense values to go very high before she stops dealing damage. She has 850 attack, don't forget that. What you can do to make Yana shine is to give her some attack buffs on her S2, because then you can actually see some serious damage. That's because on her S2, Yana gains 300 ASPD and invisibility for 10 seconds. And you know that high ASPD operators are amazing for utilizing attack buffs. Yana can actually deal some serious damage with the right setup, going from 28,000 damage potential in her skill to 53,000 damage potential with just warfaring. And I didn't even consider the fragile in her talent for these numbers. That's because she needs to get hit for the fragile to apply. But if you want to wait for the boss to hit Yana, then go ahead and enjoy a nice 69,000 damage potential in the same warfighting situation. Yana will activate her S2 if she gets hit, just like her S1. But sometimes she will fizzle if you just deploy Yana with her S2 in the middle of the lane. That's because this skill has a SP cost. Even if it's just 5 SP, she won't have the skill ready if she gets hit right after coming back to the hologram. And of course, Yana will still struggle with high defense enemies even on her S2. That's just the reality for a lot of ops. And if you're playing with a 5 star, you don't mind changing to a caster sometimes. Can you imagine playing around basic game mechanics? <sighs> Who does that? But jokes aside, let me talk about a part of Yana's kit that I ignored on purpose up until now. Something that I believe is very relevant. But not before we play a game. You see, these days the community is all over the place with how enemy stats have changed, and the power creep would definitely be a cause for concern if it was happening. So I want everyone to be a bit more aware about enemy stats, power craft or not. And to help with that, we will now play Mystery Enemy together. Take a look at the stats on screen and take a guess in the comments what enemy this is. It looks chunky, right? Yana would only take down half of this HP bar with a warfighting buff and her fragile debuff. I'll give you the answer on the next video. But now, back to Yana. Because Yana also has reveal in her kit. In her talent, she reveals the enemy who attacks her out of the hologram for the same duration as the fragile debuff. And on her S2, she reveals everyone inside her range on activation. I left this part until the end because it rarely even comes into play. Review is not something that you are constantly playing with. The invisible enemies that we have in the game have always been a big nothing burger. But since Pyrolysis decided to put invisibility on harder enemies, I think it's worth giving some extra thought to review in general. Hey, keep Yana and any other review ops you want in your back pocket. Who knows what hypergriff will pull up next time. But that's really it. Yana is weird to play if you think of her as a dog keeper. She doesn't play the same as the others in the class at all. But other than that, she's a nice support if the boss can hit her. And she's fine as a DPS if you want to help her as true. But now, tell me your opinions on Yana in the comments. I know I love the idea of her S1. And don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed the review. I hope everyone has a very nice day. Peace out.